Hey everybody, it's Randy Goodman here, real estate broker with Harvey Callis Real Estate. And I am super excited to be here with Maria Arventides, who is a reverend and an author of The Sovereign Light and other books. And she actually has a whole bunch of other um, pieces and parts of her that uh, you know, she helps all sorts of people and I can't wait to hear all about it. So Maria, thank you so much for being here with me. It's my pleasure and what an honor to be here with you today, Randy. Well, I'm super excited to learn about you and share you with everybody in our audience. So tell us a little bit about what you do. What is your business? What, it, what how do you help people? Well, uh, to put it uh, in a in a more um, natural terms, I am a spiritual alchemist and a creative entrepreneur, nice. author, script writer, self publisher, ceremony officiant, and religious official within the province of Ontario. Oh, we're not you have quite a few things that you do, Maria. <laughs> You're a busy girl. Okay, so tell us a little bit about what you, what's your story? Like what led you to doing what you do? So give us like a little, you know, quick background history. Is this what you wanted to do as a kid? Is this what you studied in school? Give us a little story there. Well, uh, I was born in Greece on July 7th, 1969 and immigrated to Canada in March, 1975 as an only child with overprotective parents and many brothers and many brother and sister paired off cousins. My mother, a very religious woman who was a housewife and a seamstress customized many used and donated clothing for me to wear. And my father, he worked for his younger brother at an auto body shop painting cars as a masonry man became the greatest handyman there was for all his friends and community at large well my mother she's uh, strongly believed in getting a good education <laughs> almost as much as her faith in mankind and his religion i was an ugly duckling <laughs> with english as a second language that i had to learn at the age of 14 my father got me a job to pay for my braces, I had a thumb overbite, and summer flights to Greece with them whenever I had the chance, you know, and I worked part time on the weekends for $4 an hour at this place called Harvest Donuts at Warden and Shepherd in a place called Scarborough. A month before graduating dropped out of high school in grade 10, then four years later returned to complete my OSSD high school that would be grade 12 science i excelled in the sciences department biology tech aesthetics horticulture in 1993 started my own artistic adventure with a collection of my artwork created calendars called wild joker unlimited with limited creations and hired students to help me sell them door to door with shirts of the cover that was the logo you know what i did is, uh, well, I would paint murals. I started this from grade four, it was my passion. And I would do like scale models, like people would do with um, architecture, with homes. And I love doing that, you know, the, uh, the scale models of, you know, how your home wants to be. I also was uh, really good at fashion designing and my mom would do clothes for me. She would be my seamstress. So I would do the drawings. Again, I was very good at doing murals for people. And this is how I got into this calendar collection that it became a solar kind of celebration that um, put all the faiths together, all the religions together and all the celebrations. And every month had everything included on there. And the shirts were of a Joker card riding on a black panther holding another bubble, bubble stick figure of himself. In 1994, uh, I got the certification in uh, retail meat cutting from George Brown College. 
I, you know, I would have to start my own business because I couldn't really work for others as a butcher. And it was something like, hell, you're a girl, come on. In 1995, I received my smart surf license. And then I went into accounting uh, with QuickBooks and learned a little bit of that. So, you know, I can operate my own business. Then I went to Centennial College uh, starting a small business and I got into automotive damage appraisal so that my father can get me working with him. And it was always about uh, my father and, you know, uh, that kind of thing in the, in the footsteps of, you know, the patriarchy and what I can do, but I'm a woman and it's like, what? So in 1999, I went to Humber College for two years in health sciences. So let's, let's summarize this, Randy. I have 23 years experience in the funeral profession. I became ordained into the Canadian International Metaphysical Ministry in 2018, became legally registered in the province of Ontario as a reverend now and with my very own ministry called the Sovereign Light. I co-founded and I am the CEO of Canadian Society of Celebrants. It's a legal business and corporate entity in that very same year uh, that my mother passed away. And I published my very first book in 2019. Everything is a work in progress, Randy. What can I say? I don't know. I can go on, uh, you know. Um, you just have I, so much experience under your belt. It's <laughs> unbelievable. Like, you know, I love hearing people's stories of what they went through and how did they get to where they are today and you know just the different things there are so many things there that you can do that you're capable of that's incredible Maria <laughs> like really incredible wow uh you know you really have um you know a whole gamut of things that you're able to do or able to teach people uh, and able to help people with and I love it. And, I, and it's nice that you kind of fell into the things that, you know, even though your dad wanted you to do certain things and, you know, you got some amazing experiences from what your parents wanted you to do, but you kind of found where you were comfortable and what resonated with you and what you wanted to do. So it's, you know, it's nice that you went through that transition to kind of get comfortable in your own shoes. But one thing I noticed that, you know, when you were telling your story, you know, and, and it always sticks out to me because people don't tend to value themselves or, uh, you know, look at themselves as good or beautiful people or whatnot. And you had called yourself an ugly duckling, you know, and have you grown out of that thinking pattern? Have you been able to heal yourself out of thinking a negative thing about yourself and come into your own? Uh, I, I, you know, I guess the older you get, you have more stories to share with people when I'm showing my age here. Uh, when I was younger, the kids used to tease me a lot. And um, of course, that's natural for the boys to tease the girls. And uh, they used to call me so many names, one of them being a man eater. <laughs> and then I just so didn't like being outcasted like this. And my father used to always say, you know, when I talk to you, he had this thing with respect from fear. And when he looked at me, you know, you had to fear him and respect him. And it was like, um, why wasn't I closing my mouth? Why wasn't I giving him that serious uh, confirmation look? Because I had a thumb overbite and I couldn't close my mouth. And I had a perma smile, like an alligator or something like that, right? And uh, he got so upset with me, but he never, he went to raise his hand, but he never hit me and he felt really bad about it. So he took me to the dentist and um, I forget his name now on Markham over there, Dr. Abrams or something like that. And for two and a half years, I had braces and I had um, a headgear and then I could still remember <clears throat> um, the ghost feeling of the retainers. And so you know it was it was a, a process that i had to go through and then i had overweight issues that i still continue to carry on with me today 
And there's so many variations of this. Um, <clears throat> it's not so much that I don't love myself. I do love myself. And I came into myself, uh, I guess I was in my 30s when I started to discover who I am and loving on me. And that's so very important that I have to share with, with, the, with the rest of the world um, to, to love on yourself. Don't look at it from outside. You know, don't, uh, you know, you think that uh, the outside, if you want to change the world, you have to go inside. I mean, when, when you look at a mirror, <clears throat> um, you know, you can't go and, and put on lipstick on the mirror. Yes, you can go and kiss the mirror and have a perma lipstick on there, but ultimately you have to put the lipstick on yourself in order to, to, to change the mirror, meaning that you have to go within. And then in this way, you can change, uh, you can change the world when you change yourself. And once you feel that you're worthy and you get rid of all that shame and that guilt, I know firsthand, I mean, like the whole community, um, LGBTQ, they're in the process of trying to find themselves. And uh, the whole entire youth right now is going through all these changes. And we're uh, globally, uh, humankind is at a youthful stage. So mm -hmm. we're kind of growing up all together. You know, it doesn't matter the age, but as a society, we are growing up. And we have to figure out, you know, um, that we love ourselves. We don't have to change our, you know, if you, if you're gay, be gay, but just love your body because you signed up for this. You signed up to come into this body. You signed up for all, everything that's happening to you. You signed up for it. This is, this is a learning, uh, this, this here called earth is a learning experience. It's a school for us to learn. Nowhere else are you gonna get this opportunity. And we learn from all the contrasts. How else are we gonna learn? And this is how we grow and we expand. We can't have everything so perfect because then we're not moving out of our comfort zone. This is the only way we're gonna grow and you know, um, embrace, embrace adversity. Yeah, and so uh, can you say that you're authentically loving yourself now? Of course, you know, and you don't want to get to the point where like there's there's a thing called ego too, right? Mm -hmm. And um, narcissistic behaviors. And, um, you know, the thing about that is, is if you're hurting, you have to go through that pain, you have to go through the lessons to learn, but also you have to love that inner child that, that uh, neglected rejected child from within. And you got to be your own parent. And, yeah. and you know, um, this is the nurturing process, the inner nurture with the inner child, because that child is your subconscious. That child is the creator and co-creator with your higher self that creates your circumstances. And you can either choose to be a victim or a creator of your circumstances. And it starts with loving on you and accepting who you are. You don't have to change yourself. You don't have to dye your hair unless you want to and it looks better for you or however, but you don't have to put this warrior mask or makeup or all these things. And um, yes, I mean, if you go on stage, that's fine, but you have to accept yourself for who you are. Uh, you know, and, um, and that energy that you have to express to the, to the world. You are this light. This is the divine light expression, uh, your signature uh, expression of who you are. And uh, the world needs us. Every one of us is important and valuable to this, to this uh, uh, holographic reality of the consciousness. And we're individuated consciousness. That's what spirit is, having an experience in this containment, in this uh, in this spacesuit, whatever you want to call it, it's an experience, and we have to accept this is the the the, the containment of our spiritual expression. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Maria. That's awesome. So, tell us a little bit about services that you offer, so our audience can know, like, what should they be reaching out to you for? Tell us a little bit about those services. 
Well, if you're looking to get married, I provide wedding ceremony uh, services, uh, you know, simple questionnaire consultation, a purpose of gathering declaration of intent and um, one or more unity elements, uh, readings, uh, your vows, pronouncement, and that overall just um, encompasses what the, you know, your wedding is. I can perform a quickie, a casual matrimony under 10 people, including your two witnesses uh, that include an introduction and any un unity ceremony element ring exchange as being the most common and familiar, including wedding vows that you can provide as optional or that you can repeat after me with, you know, this is a quickie. My passion is to help bespoke your ceremony. Over a decade of experience in the funeral profession, I'm an entrepreneur at heart. I engage with people to provide advice on options and ideas to better match their purpose for the many and various elements that can incorporate a meaningful scripted ceremony officiating and on your behalf to provide public speaking ordained into the Canadian International Metaphysical Ministry performing legal ceremonies, LGBT commitments, weddings, renewal of vows, parting of ways, pet memorial tributes, graveside, funeral and naming ceremonies. From a spiritual perspective, open to serve all faiths, and what a great privilege to find myself in a rich tapestry of cultural diversity and traditions. Beautiful. So you've got quite a few services that people can reach out to you for. Is that better? Awesome. <laughs> so what are your goals over the next year? Well, I have this business I'm working on right now and you know, the services I provide, uh, I don't know how, how this is going to go, but I now with the COVID restrictions lifted, I can do more pet memorials. I do well in that um, for people. And that that's just a simple graveside service that I can do like for people, you know, cremation, that would be um, hydrolysis, however you want to do this for that ceremony, wherever you want it, I can be there to show up and help uh, with the uh, memorialization of your pet or loved one, anyone. And I can, I can perform, uh, you, you know, baby namings, whatever it is that you want, I'm here for you. And my passion is to write. So I'm gonna be working on another book. Also, what do I see in the future? What I really wanna do? I wanna create not short films, but I'd like to be a scriptwriter for movies, for nice long movies, not documentaries, and I, you know, and tell people stories through movies. Now, if you write a good book, but uh, more or less, it's like a hundred pages to a movie, and then it gets a little bit different from actually writing a book. And so, I love to write, and I have an academy going, um, Canadian Society of Celebrants. <clears throat> For those of you who don't know, I have an academy to help train people uh, to become celebrants. Now, you don't have to be licensed. That's the beauty about being a celebrant. You can perform a ceremony anywhere, even off planet. <laughs> and awesome. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fantastic. So tell us a little bit about how you give back to community or how you support um, you know, anything charitable or philanthropic or, uh, you know, what's your vision of giving back to community or society? So right now what I'm doing is um, I'm giving free uh, interviews online for people to, uh, you know, as a social influencer, for people to to get more exposure on social media platforms, various platforms, uh, to just uh, come online with me and share their light and connect with the rest of the world as much as we can. Um, you know, with my Sovereign Light Ministry, I have a uh, uh, podcast, Radio FM, um, <clears throat> station that every Sunday I 
do an interview, but in order for you, you have to become like a Facebook friend or someone that I know that can be a real person and actually be my friend. And this is how I do my work of getting to know who you are. And I do research on you and everything. And then I come up with a script. And then I introduce you and then we have a heart to heart conversation. And if you haven't done this before, then you can actually get some training or exposure of what it's like to be on film and being video recorded here on Zoom. And this is what I do, Randy. I offer like maybe up to an hour of this service that I do for free for people to, to show their light and authenticity and come out of whatever darkness they might have been feeling, uh, you know, bad about themselves or whatever it is to just get them inspired and to come out and step up and empower themselves. And this is what I do for free, Randy. I love that. I love that. And thank you for doing that. And I know you interviewed me and that was wonderful. So thank you for doing that. And, you know, it's so important to be able to support people or give them a platform to share themselves and to get that exposure that you're talking about. So thank you so much for doing that for people. I think it's really important and it's, it's a big gift. You're giving of your time to do this for people and you're not charging them anything. So, you know, it's a wonderful thing. So thank you. And uh, I wanted to know, Maria, do you have any tips or suggestions for people who are watching and listening to you? Is there anything that can better their life or make them happier or, uh, you know, anything that you would like to share? Well, my suggestion to you all is to become your own motivation. What you are doing now, who are you doing it for? if not for yourself, take responsibility and always know you have a choice. In fact, many, the decisions you make unfold your circumstances. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, so how can people get in touch with you? What's the best way for them to reach out to you? Peerlessmoments.com. Peer, I have a webpage there and um, also well, let me look because uh, Canadian Society of Celebrants, I also have a web page. I'm on Facebook, um, Twitter, uh, YouTube. Love's Creation Unlimited is my YouTube channel. Um, of course, I have a few other YouTube channels. You know, um, I'm on YouGetTube, I'm on Odyssey, I'm on BitChute. Um, what else can I say? Uh, I guess I have uh, Canadian International Metaphysical Ministries. You can find me there. I have a whole page on there, uh, Canadian Metaphysical uh, Ministry dot com slash rev uh, underscore dash Arvanatides and um, um, what is it dash page. Uh, you know, you can find me on there. I have a whole page on myself and you can even Google me. And, you know, I don't know, I, I'm on Patreon. For those of you who want to um, subscribe to my Patreon channel, you'll get the audio visual version of my book that I have going and you can sample it on YouTube as well. Um, you know, of the Sovereign Light. Uh, named after my ministry, and the book is 365 Days. It's a course in metaphysical spirituality, and, you know, it takes you through many tools and a process towards ascension, and, you know, it's eight, 848 pages. So each and every segment, which is 319 lessons, I take you through on audio, video, visual uh, version of the book. That's incredible. <laughs> and, and, you know, I also have packages that I can offer on, on um, what is it, on uh, my Sovereign Light Ministry uh, blog. Because um, I also have a blog spot for all of these, you know. I have three different things going here. The Sovereign Light Ministry. I have a Sothic Star Tetrahedral activations and initiations into godhood levels one two and three if you want this package you can go into my the sovereign light ministry dot blogspot dot com i also have 
inner child workshop uh, that's like for $30 and you can PayPal me on Alchemist uh, Rama. So basically this, this is something that helps you to, to learn how to love yourself by accepting your inner child and going through a certain, like there's three meditations on here and uh, I can offer this. I know it's, again, it's not free. And, you know, I do meditations for people. I, I do consultations for people. I am a counselor, uh, you know, I, there's so many things that I don't know how, have I answered your question? I don't know. Yes. <laughs> Yes, definitely. <laughs> Thank you so much, Maria. You are just like a wealth of information and so many things people can reach out to you for. It's incredible. Uh, so please oh. connect with Maria and, you know, just see where the conversation goes and see how she can support you on your personal or professional journey and uh, to go forward, because I know you're very passionate about what you do and helping people, and that's incredible. So I look forward to people getting in touch with you. Maria, thank this you. Is, this, is, this is the diploma nice. that you can actually get from my, from my society as, as a member, and you too can also become a mentee wherever you might be, and also help to, you know, um, great others when they're doing their ceremonies and get paid for it this is what happens when you get a diploma you're capable of doing ceremonies for others and also being a preceptor for others and this is an actual diploma <laughs> that is from my society canadian society of celebrants this is what you would get awesome so if anybody's interested please connect with maria and thank you so much, Maria, for sharing with us today. That was fantastic. Thank you so very much, Randy. Have an awesome day, everybody.